baseball is dead. Rest in peace. Welcome home, Dallas. It feels so good to be back. Dallas Braden oh. in Boston, Massachusetts. Oh. Uh, about to be on the receiving end of the second sweep that the Red Sox hand the Oakland A's this season. Uh, very excited. Uh, are you able to, we, I know we talked about this. Mm-hmm. Are you able to tape something? I know that we wanted to go live, but are you able to tape something tomorrow for the Red Sox alternate broadcast? Oh, well, that all depends on what time, you know, we really have to look into my schedule. I've got some things, mm. I've got some things I've got to take care of. I've got a, mm-hmm. uh, I've got a, I've got a big interview with the, uh, with the head groundskeeper. I've, I've got a lot on, I got a lot on my You're talking to Dave Miller? I got a lot on my plate here in Boston, Jared. It's fine. I come back. Fans. Are you talking I mean, to Dave Miller? Was, talking to Dave. There was a, there was, yeah. there was a long list of uh, folks waiting outside of the hotel. Didn't expect that. 3 a.m. I mean, I appreciate yeah. it. The live is great to see. Diehard fans. Great to feel uh, the doorman. Great to see those boys back. Uh, yeah, it's just it's uh, it's it's great. It's an overwhelming feeling of of being back home here in Boston. Oddly enough, yeah, yeah, back home, putting his it, feet you're, up. You're about to get those fucking innards jostled over the next three days, bud. Start two of the Tuesday. hottest teams in baseball. I will say, say that. Joe. Let them know. I will right say now. that. Let them know. A's coming off a fucking winning homestand, pal. Wow. You want some of that? You want some of that? You want that green and gold Kinda, steam yeah. roll, huh? Yeah. The team I that do. just put the fucking birds in a cage? <laughs> My God. The Turn the Orioles good. into a bunch of fledgling <laughs> pigeons. You see that absolute pounding oh. the A's put out? Buddy. Jake, you worried, you worried about them A's? Uh, yeah. Not for a second. It's going to be a tough no. week for our boy. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. I just hope that we're going to be... I hope... We're going to be able to do a professional podcast on Wednesday. That's, that's what I hope. Because Tuesday's going to hit, and you're going to be like, oh, fuck. Went ram my mouth. We got smacked. Now I'm going to yeah, deal well, with this asshole on a Wednesday. I, I just don't want that vibe. You know what I mean? I want to be able speaking, to do this. Speaking of wanting to be able to do the podcast, Dallas, the weather is, does not look friendly this week. Yeah, we got some, we got some precipitation towards the end yeah. of the series on deck. Is that what it looks like? tomorrow and thursday i believe i think yeah both games are in jeopardy I, I can never trust what steve says he's the most cracked out weatherman i think yeah wednesday and thursday yeah so i said so the end of this year I, I felt like game one we were good game one is good game two and yeah, three good. had some question marks yeah you're about to get that work today but then the next couple of games they could be washed away what are you talking about today away. today's a day off I keep thinking today's Tuesday. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you, you go ahead and have a blast at the ballpark today, kid. I'll see you tomorrow. What are you doing today? How are you spending your off day in Boston? Well, my children are uh, outside screwing around at the park, at the pond. Uh, I think that's mm-hmm. probably going to be what's in my future. I may or may not have brought 24 wiffle balls along with two wiffle bats. I may or may not be hosting auditions at the park right here downtown for a home run derby pitcher. Okay. Did you want to hang out with me or no? Oh, well, see, you you had mentioned something about that, and then you didn't mention anything after that. So uh, I Not told you me. initially that I Not was available. And I'm available from too. from there, all I can do is wait for you to follow up. So I made myself available. I told you I was available. We did that publicly. Yeah, we and did. Then, and then I haven't heard anything after that. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus. But, but your significant other? No, 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 no. no. Uh, children, the children. No, uh, on the video side of things, we're a little tied up with other projects. Mm. Is what I was told. Oh well, there you go. That's that's tough. Yeah, that I wanted tough. to do Museum of Science. I wanted to do the duck boats. Yeah, well, guess I'll just go fuck myself. But <laughs> sounds like it. That's that's tough. Yeah. You got that's an iPhone, tough, yeah. right? You can't film. You got an iPhone. All right, Dave Portnoy. <laughs> if you if you got an iPhone, you can have a podcast network. You all you need is an iPhone. Just one person and an iPhone, and you can have a YouTube channel, a social media plan, 
and two podcasts. It's all you need. Just you and an iPhone. Very simple. A place and a micro oh. and a microphone too. <laughs> no, you no, nope. you just need an iPhone. It's from what I was told. Um, <laughs> the All Star teams got announced. They did. Yeah, they did. Are we okay yeah. with it? I feel like we gotta uh, be okay with. We'll be okay uh, with most of it. Uh, yeah, most of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. The all-star rosters were announced in completion yesterday. Uh, starting in the American League, behind the dish. It's probably not going to be correct, but my preseason MVP pick, Adley Rushman of the Baltimore Orioles. Over at first base, clean cut. Very handsome, very voluptuous. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. of the Toronto Blue Jays at second base. Standing at five foot two inches, it is Jose Altuve of the Houston Astros over at third base. The extra base hit machine, Jose Ramirez of the Cleveland Guardians at shortstop. The man, the myth of the Baltimore Orioles, it's Gunnar Henderson in the outfield, a close personal friend of mine, someone that I cherish our relationship deeply. Outfielder for the New York Yankees, Aaron Judge. Another outfielder. He of Jay Hayes, Cleveland Guardians. Is he going to be the first since Ted Williams to hit 400? I don't believe so, but it is Stephen Kwan. Uh, rounding out the outfield starters. He of the rental New York Yankees, soon to be New York Mets. It is Juan Soto at designated hitter. The Houston Astros are sending Jordan Alvarez to the All-Star game. Over in the National League, behind the dish, from what used to be my Milwaukee Brewers, William Contreras at first base, came up as a catcher, then was an outfielder, now is an All-Star first baseman. It is Bryce Harper of the Philadelphia Phillies at second base. Some may not all but some would say the most underrated player in baseball today, Cattell Marte of the Arizona Diamondbacks. At third base, also participating in the home run derby from the Philadelphia Phillies, Alec Bohm at shortstop. It's the standing ovation king himself, also from the Philadelphia Phillies, Trey Turner. In the outfield, a lot of love for them dads. For, for justice. Justice for the top prospect in baseball from 2009, Jerickson Profar. Also from the San Diego Padres, got breaded up, maybe took some supplements that he shouldn't have. Ringworm is a son of a bitch. It's Fernando Tatis Jr. Then the record holder for most interviews in the history of this franchise, this podcast right here from the Milwaukee Brewers, it's Christian Yelich. And then at DH, the $700 million man from the Los Angeles Dodgers. Crazy that the only starter from the Dodgers is this guy. Shohei Otani. Man. Those are your starting uh, rosters for the American League and the National League All-Star Game. I, I think they did a damn good job overall. Yeah. I think yeah. that's the head. I think that's the headline that these yeah. are like as at probably as close to the correct answers across the board as you're going to get for all star starters, period. Sure. Well, there's there's not a there's not a player that you're 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 sitting here right now pounding the table about. There's not a player that you feel has been so grossly overlooked that it's criminal. And how did we Agreed. get here? How could that be a thing? How could there's not. There's conversations we can have, and Jay, hey, you brought it up, which I think was a great idea. I I don't know if everybody followed through and did it or not, but you know, just kind of taking a look at who were snubs or who were perceived snubs. Again, Jay hey, did the absolute incredible video on Jared Duran highlighting what the dude was doing, what he was putting together, and how if that guy's not on your fucking list to join us in Texas, then. Uh, Jay and I would like to talk to you offline about what it is you're putting in your pipe because we would like some of that. 
Uh, but there are guys who I, I think are having great years. Um, I mean, I'll start with, I think I'm going to stay in my own backyard. And By Rooker. Yeah. But, but, and again, if you look at who the starter is in the American League, right? Jordan Alvarez, and you you put those two players side by side together this year, uh, you, you don't really have the argument. You don't, you're not concerned with how things played out. But just looking at the fact that Brent Rooker last year was an all star and threw 78 games, hit 246, 341 with a 485 uh, slug, 16 homers, 44 RBI. 12 doubles and an 826 OPS. This year, he's hitting 278, 353 with a 537 slug. So the OPS significantly higher, 891 as opposed to the 826 OPS last year. He's got 18 homers, 54 RBI, which is 10 more than last year, to go with the 15 doubles. So, sure, having a better year than he did last year when he was the player vote for the All Star game? Yes. Is it necessarily a snub based on what Jordan Alvarez has put together? No. I mean, the most. Yeah. Go ahead, Jared. Sorry. Go ahead, Dan. Go no, ahead. I was just going to say, like, I, I, the quibbles are down down the ballot, right? Or or with the, the reserves. I just think, like, yes, th- there are, in terms of the starters, like Altuve over Jordan Westberg is... Like you can be a Jordan Westberg fan, and to Dallas's point, say I think he deserved to start statistically, but that's not an outrage. Jose Altuve is an established star; he's arguably been just as good as Jordan Westberg. Like the Will Smith William Contreras thing in the NL at catcher. Like if I had a vote, I probably would have gone Will Smith. Will but, Smith. But like that's not that's not like some crazy crazy egregious thing, and then like. Brandon Nimmo statistically is the other guy who started or who stuck out as maybe uh, deserving uh, instead of Christian Yelich or perhaps um, Tatis. But again, that's it's marginal and it's not something particularly in the case of Tatis and Yelich like they are legitimately bigger stars than Brandon Nimmo. But like when you get further down, I think there is some confusing stuff that went on with the reserve selections on in both leagues. I agree with the sentiment that the debates are more so with reserves. Some starting pitchers, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sorry, I meant like know, the elected starters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't really have an issue with any of the starters. Um, Christian Walker, I'll add on to the Brent Rooker pile and raise you a Christian Walker. That feels like someone that absolutely is having an all-star campaign this year. Um, would like to see him get the nod. Uh, the Francisco Lindor debate is interesting. So yesterday he was kind of asked about not making the all-star team. And he said, you know, I guess next time I'll have a better April because, um, he's been one of the better players in the game since April. He had a shit April and he's turned it on ever since. I know that the the batting average isn't sexy. Like, you know, it's, he's hitting 250. It's a 763 OPS. But I want to say it was either in the National League or in the majors. He's like top 10 in F war. So, so you brought up the two names that I really wanted to touch on, which was Francisco Lindor and Christian Walker, because I mm. think they both tie back to the same roster decision here, and that's Pete Alonso. Um, yeah. They're really. There really is no argument to be made in favor of Pete Alonso deserving to be an all-star this year. He's not anywhere near the most qualified candidate on his own team. Both Lindor and Nimmo are unquestionably better candidates for the all-star game. Um, and he's not the best candidate at that position, as Jared just mentioned with Christian Walker, who is having a better season than, than Pete Alonso in essentially every way that you can have a season uh, as a first baseman. So. It's hard not to look at the concurrent announcements of here are the all stars and Pete Alonso is returning to the to the home run derby to try and win it for a third time and think, hmm, did Pete Alonso say I'm not going to participate in the home run derby unless I am also named an all star? I'm not coming if I'm not an all star because there is no argument in favor of him being an all star. And that has that has that caught that 
Lindor's situation is more complicated, and I don't even think it's because of April. It's because there is real depth at shortstop. So unless you're going to take well, four or five shortstops in the NL, like I can understand how Lindor becomes a little bit of a hard fit, even if he is like unquestionably like he hasn't made the all star team since 2019, which is like the dumbest thing in the world. But Nimmo is just a better player and could have fit on the all star team or Walker's just a better player and they could have taken a different met. It's just a weird thing that Pete Alonso is on this team. I mean, Francisco Lindor, as we sit right now in the National League, is second in terms of war accumulated at the shortstop spot. Three and a half behind only Ellie De La Cruz, who is sitting right now at four and the kind of season that that fucking guy is having. I, Lindor, I mean, L- Lindor very well may be the guy who has the best argument for, I mean, it's not an egregious overlook, but it is a, uh, Hey, uh, it, what about, what about that dude? It's right? a compound. It's a compounding thing. It's not just that he didn't make the all-star team in 2024. It's that he also didn't make it in 23, 22, 21. Like that's, he has been the best or second best shortstop in baseball over basically any period of time that you want to look at since he became a shortstop, like a, a major league player and came up to the big leagues. The fact that he's consistently getting jobbed on these all-star games is not the end of the world because the all-star game is not the end of the world. But when we look back at his career and we're like, why is he only an X time all-star? It's because he's been jobbed out of three or four all-star appearances that his, his career deserved. Like that's a thing has, now. Has he received a, uh, has he received a player vote at any point in time? I don't know. I don't know. And, and would he be in a position to receive the player vote, meaning like, was he not voted in at any point in time during one of these stages, which obviously he wasn't, and then available to be voted oh, in for like that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. You know, like, know. like, like Brent Rooker last year was voted in as the player vote, the player selection, his contemporaries, his colleagues voted. Well, I'm pretty sure that him. also used to be a fan vote mechanism too, right? Like, I think if you go back not that far. It was that that final spot was a fan vote. It wasn't a right. Uh, was it a fan vote? Yeah, I'm pretty sure the final man was a thing, and and fans got to vote for it. Um, and, and then and now that was given to the players last year. Yeah, I think so. But I don't know. Like I, Christian Walker, I'm somebody. I just think. I I just think it's it's bizarre that you know, like the fifth best position player on his own team and like the 11th best first baseman found his way onto the <laughs> all-star onto the all-star team other than they want him participating in the home run derby. That's all it is. It could also yeah. be that um, if you look at like the NL, I can, I'm pretty sure Lindor is probably going to end up going just because Mookie can't play. So they're going to need that another infielder and Bryce Harper can't play. Well, that, I mean, to some extent, all of these arguments become moot after a while with the all-star game because, you know, 25 extra people get invited because, you know, half, you know, half the a quarter of the team pulls out in any given year. But like, I, I do think there's something to the idea that a guy has to like do the version of begging and pleading to make the all-star game when he's unquestionably one of the best p- players at his position and has been for like any meaningful amount of time that you want to look at it. It's just weird that he's become so underrated the, uh, while the, playing for a larger market than where he came from. The the Pete Alonso thing, I'm, I'm going to push back on. And here's why. Yeah, because it. It, Because it was a few years ago where we wanted a guy who was more than willing to sign up for the Derby. We wanted a I guy who was, who was more than willing to say, I'll be the Derby dude. If yes. I hit, do, do you remember? And I remember saying this. So if yes, Pete Alonso, I'm not saying that's wrong. 100. So so I want him. I I want him. Can there. you not if, participate in the Derby if you didn't make yes, the All Star team? Yes, you, you can. Have, that has happened before. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, then you, yeah. Yeah. But he so, said so, I'll only do it if I make the All Star team. So they put him on the All Star team. Dallas, right? I'm not disputing that I want him to be the Derby man. What I don't want is him is an, a strong arming All Star sure. appearances out of other people, including two people it, in his own his clubhouse. Own Talk mm-hmm. about leadership, man. Talk about leadership. Where's Pete Alonzo's leadership in that Mets mm. clubhouse? We talk about Lindor's issues or the pe- things that people whisper well, so, about all the time. Pete Alonzo is literally stealing all-star appearances from his teammates. Time wow. out. Brandon time Nimmo out, or Francisco Lindor. Good leader. Time out. Spin Zone says 
or or are they giving this to Pete Alonso as opposed to having anybody else that they would prefer to give this nod to? It's like, well, we do have options. We could get behind somebody or we could just continue to support the notion of Pete Alonso being the derby guy. So let's he can do the derby without being there. an all star. The only gap there is his personal ego, if that's indeed the case. Well, that, that's yeah, that's, cool because and, he's he's also Jay Hay going into free agency. So to be able to say uh, I'm coming off an all star season versus not an all star season is a Boris client. That's it. a Boris move one on one saying, yeah, we're going to strong arm our way into but the all star. Oh, yeah, you, yeah, you want us in that derby. That's the thing. Do we What's have we, we, we don't have definitive mm. proof that that is something that has happened, right? You guys are just floating Dude, this idea. I am 100 percent. I am just floating this idea. But what about his season? says that he should be an all-star. Oh, I'm not I'm not I'm not telling you that, that th- those are two very separate conversations. You can argue I, that I, statistically can, he's the most egregious selection at any position in yeah. in the game this year. Cuz you could you could even say the 18 home runs but doesn't Christian Walker have like 22? Mm-hmm. And, and Christian Walker yeah. is a gold glove caliber first baseman while Pete Alonso is something other than that. Yeah. Where did the yeah. there was a report though, right? That it, what did he either say it publicly or there was a report that he was only going to do the derby if he made the all star team? Oh, I didn't see that. Uh, that's if he that's what I'm asking that. about. That's all yeah, that, that I'm that, asking that about. Is, 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 is if that is if that is a public statement that he has made or that his camp has made, well, then I'm not going to call it an issue, but then that's the conversation. That's a viable conversation to have. It's like, okay, hold on. How do we okay that? It's one thing if we're all in agreement that the dude can go to the Derby and do that, but for him to be rewarded or awarded an actual all-star selection just in an effort to get him there. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. Jared's right. Jared's right. He told the post. Yep. He told the post on Friday. If I'm selected to the all-star team, then I am definitely open to doing it. Alonzo said, referring to the home run derby, it's a super fun event. Um, okay. The implication, I guess, being that if he's not selected, uh, he won't go. So Jared is right on that. So that's, that's even well, more galling, actually. Well, no, but that doesn't say, no, all that says, all, <laughs> hey, Pete, are you going to do the derby? Oh, yeah, man. If I get selected to the all-star game. I'd love to do the Derby. It's super fun. Uh, what a- yeah, but he doesn't have to. He does. He knows that he doesn't have to be an all-star to participate. He should just be like, yeah, I, I'll do it. Do you want to do it or not? Are you the Derby man or are you not? Because yeah, so if you are but- the Derby man, do you have to find out that you're an all-star to show up to the Home Run Derby? Because the Home Run Derby is scheduled whether or not you're going to the all-star game. So, so th- either so- be the Derby man or don't be. Well, that's what we're about to find out. That's, that's what... No, we found mm-hmm. out. What, what did we find out? We found out Derby he's not man's an all-star. a fraud, baby. Derby he man's hasn't, a fraud. He wow. hasn't denied going, though, has he? No, it's because he got selected to the all-star team because he, he, he forced the commissioner's office into, into putting him there. Are there the only three Derby entrants right now? Do you think MLB is like scrambling to get participants? Not a good sign either that Pete Alonso's power play worked for the, for the Derby. I think you're spot on there. I mean, yep, it's, there's, it's, a, it's a week away. And we, were we talking have about three of eight guys. We were talking about birds before the podcast started. There's, there's been some birds chirping, been some birds chirping. About what, that we've got more star power in our derby? <laughs> that, well, that, we, that we've got more willing participants and that we will, <laughs> at, and that at the end of it, we will have more willing participants. There will be more people who wanted to do the home run derby in the, the baseball is dead underdog home run derby than in the major league home run derby. What's going on there, Dallas? Why do you think that is, guys? I mean, it's I I'm get tell you like, right the, now. No, nope. the Here old is. adage is like, oh, I don't want to mess up my swing. But like, who the fuck actually mess up their swing in the home run derby? And the, it's is it the format? Guys don't want to like do three minutes of nonstop swinging. I think it's I think it's a combination of like format and. Look, if I'm going to be the all-star, like like the Pete Alonso conversation, if I'm going to be there and I'm an all-star and I'm about it, great. If not, and you're just kind of ringing me up to see if I'll go participate because I can drop dick, well, then I, I'm, I'm not signing up for that. I, I like my off days. I like the all-star off days. So I don't want to fly to Texas, deal with the hoopla, do all that, and no, I'm all good. 
I am all good. So, so they have to start paying the like each participant instead of having a cash prize for the winner. Uh, that might also be something. Yeah, that I don't have a problem with that. Like, I feel like fans would be like, oh, man, it's such an honor to be in the home run derby. But like, you know, I think when I, I'm obviously you have a double perspective, Dallas, like as a player. Your off days are very far and few between. And then as a broadcaster, you're also you're probably more exhausted as a broadcaster than as a player or as a starting pitcher. Uh, so these guys that are going out there going balls to the wall to have these all star seasons like, yeah, it is a little bit of an inconvenience to have to go to the all star game. And if you're not making the all star team and you're about to get a little mini vacay built in in the middle of the season and now you have to go participate in the home run derby. There's a cash prize for the winner. It's like, yeah, all right. Well, I don't have to be there. You kind of need me to be there, so pay me. I I have no yep. problem with the league here's, here's paying the deal. guys. To here's the deal. You're paying you're paying these guys 10k a pop to mic them up on Sunday night for a half inning. You don't have that same loot to spread around to get these guys. I'm not doing the, the All Star game. 10k. No, 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 I, no, no. That no. If I'm not on the All Star team, you hear what I just said? They have 10k to yeah. pay a guy for a half inning. Yeah, but that's ESPN money, right? Or is it Major League Baseball money? No, it's in the CBA, right? Yeah, so it is MLB money. So so if you have 10K to give one guy for a half inning, I'd like to believe you have similar funds to part ways with to compensate players to get them there for a derby. I just want to be clear. I'm not against any of that. They can They can pay. They can entice however they want. Uh, I also respect players' desire to go and rest during what is an incredibly grueling season. If Pete Alonso wanted to do that, that's fine. You just can't you can't make yourself out to be the home run derby guy and then and then not show up for the derby unless you're an all star. That's the that's the crux here. And yes, that was what it, I wanted. I basically had when he said what he said so many years ago about the derby, two years ago, whatever it was, three years ago when he was when. I basically had this vision of like the abominable snowman sitting in the Matterhorn and every year when it's derby time, he comes sliding down on his sled of derby trophies and is like, all right, I'm here. I don't even know what's been going on in baseball for the last three months, but it's fucking derby time. And you know what that means. Pedro Alonso is here to put on a show. Yeah. Like that's that's what you want. So it does. It falls a little flat when it's like, I'll be the Derby guy. If I get voted to be an all-star, then I would be more than happy to participate. Other than that, though, I'm probably out on being the Derby guy. Like that's not that's not great. Who uh do you want to see in the Derby, Joe? Like if you could handpick some guys. Oh, uh, um, Paul DeYoung has 16 homers. He would love to see him in there. Uh, guy's got some pop, man. Sneaky pop. But uh, for real, I think Ellie De La Cruz is the one guy who I think should be in it. Who's not really up there in, like, I guess, home runs, but would be electric. I think O'Neal he'd be Cruz. a difference maker. I don't know. Like, nah, you know, you don't really know if we're going to perform in the derby. He doesn't really strike me as a guy who's going to knock like a fuck ton of home runs like Vladdy and Pete, but who knows? He's a big guy do I, that I think they kind of need because I doubt Judge is doing it. I know Otani's not doing it, which sucks. I would like to see Marcelo Zuna. I doubt they ask him because of his <laughs> off the field issues. It's a good reason to not ask, I would say. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think Ellie De La Cruz is the one guy that who really c- would make a difference for me. Who hasn't done it yet? Everyone else is kind of like, yeah, okay. I mean, they asked Alec Bohm is already in it. How the fuck is Alec Bohm in the home run derby? No offense, Alex Bohm, but what the fuck? Because he said yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it seems like they no, it can't be all that. Like other people, you think everyone but, said no? I saw a great look- tweet that said he's going to break the home run derby record for doubles off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't it going to be the same group of guys that you're always interested in watching do this? It's not like we have somebody who just shows up randomly every yep. year and you're like, oh, I'd love to see that person. Like, like I, to Joey's point about 
Paul DeYoung. It's like, oh, he's fucking, he's banging right now. But Paul DeYoung at no point in time is lighting up my radar Paul when it comes to derby names that I just can't overlook. Like how the, uh, it's a great how is the young not getting any run here? Like that's not the case. Like, do you want to see 16 homers? I'd love to see that guy show up and fucking win the whole thing. <laughs> Paul, I want to see of Paul the young. I, I want to see like, don't you want to see Stanton? Just I was absolutely. Just, I was waiting for you to finish talking and I was going to say, yeah. talk about a guy who doesn't need to be an all-star to show up to the derby. I mean, he's made $400 yeah. million. Dollars. He's probably not going to do it or whatever, but like, uh, I would love to see Stanton just put on a show for everybody because that's unlike anything that happens in baseball. Is him? Well, is he, he was in the Miami one in yes. seventeen. Yes. Yeah, yes. We and he didn't do to- that well. Like I think he got eliminated in the first round. But as, as I've said before, he hit every hardest hit home run, and Judge was in that one. It was like two totally yeah. different people hitting home runs than Stanton. So, yeah. so, so that's what I was going to say. Is let's just go through. Like let's call it the Statcast show. That's, and yeah. like if if. If you're in the top he was 10, also in San Diego, too, I think he did better. Sorry. Yeah. Like, like if, you, if you're in the top 10 of exit velocities, then then it's almost like Hunger Games. Like you're going to be a part of the pool and you will be selected and you're going to have to go and defend your your arena, your your section, your zone, whatever it is. So like Schwarber? Stanton, Cruz, Schwarber, Judge, Joe Adele, like it's the Derby. It's not a base running competition, so he should be fine. Um, Matt Chapman, Jordan Alvarez, like Has these Jordan are just guys. Done a derby? No, huh? I don't believe. But so. Like as far as as far as, as far as average bat speed, those are your like those are guys like in the top ten, right? Gunnar Henderson, Julio Rodriguez. Um, so I think you start looking at you can look at the list like that, and it's going to be a lot of the same names year in and year out that you're interested in watching. Just hammer baseballs. But, I'd like to uh, see yeah, Tatis uh, in it if Tatis is going to be there. He could rede- redemption tour. Mm. Ah, is that a good thing for him though to go up there with the shoulder the way it is to try to just? I thought you were going to say is, is that a good thing for him to go up there and hit five hundred foot home runs and people would be like ah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> or he can't want get can't get one out of the park. Has he? I don't think he's ever done it before, right? I don't remember him ever in it. I no, but I mean. So. Like, could you imagine if you were the Padres and he goes out there and sure puts on a show, but then the next two weeks he's like, dude, the fucking shoulder, not feeling great. You saw those high finishes solo, uh, shoulders barking a bit. Don't want that happening. Don't yeah. want that happening. It's a pipe dream. He's hurt right now. So I doubt it's going to happen. Why limit ourselves to active players? It's a good point. <laughs> If we're that Canseco. desperate, like Come let's on, fucking Canseco. do this. Let's do this thing, dude. Like, uh, look, do you want? look, look, Jay. Hey, I just watched. I just watched Nate Diaz and Jorge Masdevall fight in a boxing match. Both gentlemen, thirty nine years old. Safe to say, uh, they are rounding third in terms of their mixed martial art careers. Um, while it was exciting, and Nate did take the decision, beat it, game bred. Uh, there's probably other fireworks that you're signing up for if made available. So who, who like who, who are we who are we pulling? Oh, out? I don't know because Major League Baseball already they're already doing that right now, Jose, right? They, maybe Jose Canseco. Canseco. I mean, they got John, Johnny Gomes is fucking smashing balls into the ocean in Curacao uh, somewhere randomly. Like they 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 got I that think going can, on. I think Cano's hitting like 700 in the Mexican league. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's pull Robbie Cano back. In. I mean, he's got, he's, he's won one. Didn't he win one? Uh, yeah, I know he did it. He, he did and his, his dad, dad had right? that magical. Wasn't it him and his dad had that big yeah. moment? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was, I think he, I think he also followed up by hitting like one home run the next year. Yeah. Uh, or it was the year before. He had <laughs> no, one. That home, does had, sound right. Actually. Yeah. yeah. One derby where he maybe hit one home run and then won the derby. Wow. Talk about a fucking great player we never talk about anymore. What That's about good. uh? What about Jorge Jason Soler? Bay? I would love Soler would be cool. Soler, solar power. You you think we should bring back Jason Bay for the Derby? Yeah, he needs to redeem himself. I that think was he a hit. low point. Yeah. Pirate that, that pirate Jason Bay or Red Sox Jason Bay? Uh, I mean, he was better as a Red Sox, but he needs to redeem himself as a pirate because. I believe that was the year that they did the home run derby where each player represented a different country. So Canada had to have somebody. <laughs> and I think he hit one home run. <laughs> sorry, just one. Sorry. Sorry. Say sorry. Hey, sorry. <laughs> I think if they did, I mean, if they did Canada again, if they did the countries and they had Tyler O'Neill in the home run derby, we're talking a whole different representation of the great state of Canada. Tyler O'Neill, best shoulders in baseball. 
best of everything. He's fucking jacked. <laughs> he has better shoulders than Framber. He has better shoulders than Framber, dude. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. I. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was a, there was a physical reaction when I saw him shirtless. Clip that. <laughs> Uh, can, I, I know we're talking derby can i throw in another uh name as far as snubs go oh who do you got uh can i can i can i can i throw in uh kenley jansen for consideration to the conversation sure yeah i mean i think clay holmes was kind of a weird choice so there clay holmes sucks. what about craig kimbrell no not no? better than no no craig Is kimbrell craig Kim- is Craig Kimbrell having a better season than Kenley Jansen? Off the top of my head, probably not. But K- Craig Kimbrell has been on quite a fucking roll. Very similar seasons. Oh. Kenley boys up. Never down. Never down. Never down. Never down. Kenley boys always up. Yeah. I, I, I mean, without comparing those two, because I have not, I, I, would, I, I would think they're similar. No, I mean, C- Clay Holmes probably should not be an all-star. And w- whatever reliever who's better than him you want to slot into his spot kenley being one of those options i think that would be fine i i just hate how many relievers quote unquote have to make the all-star team in a given year uh i i just feel like it's nobody wants to see the like 95 percent of the relief pitchers who get selected to the all-star game nobody's there to see them nobody cares whether they're there and like it, it's just crazy how many like like is are we glad that Kirby Yates is an all star <laughs> instead of like George Kirby this year? Like, who, which of those is going to age better? Which of those is like, or just name your starting pitcher in the AL uh, who should be an all star if you don't like the George Kirby poll? But like, I know Kirby Yates is having a great year. It's just like it's like twenty five innings. It's well, okay. well, but so I've I've always look I've always had, and this is a bigger, deeper conversation. I think maybe to get into because of the whole compensation that's tied to the acknowledgement but i i can understand wanting stars that are notable noticeable to be a part of this but i have also always tried to remind people that this is where stars are born too this is where and i'm not telling you that we don't know who kirby oh, okay. Yates is come on Easy. yeah yeah the, the that's not in the is, case of relief pitchers. What relief pitcher no. has been, what stardom has been born out of the all-star game for? No, 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 not, not relievers, just players in general. When we're okay. like, oh yeah, but this guy at this position, it's like, well, if, if this guy doesn't get his uh, initial acknowledgement, how does he start to grow into this player that starts to be looked at as somebody who you can't overlook somebody who you'd rather give the legacy nod to just because of the track record, blah, 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 blah. So I can appreciate wanting noticeable and notable game names that can help continue to grow the game. But I also think you have to give those guys the respect (coughs) of having quality, productive first halves with this acknowledgement. Uh, I'm looking at the numbers now comparing Kenley Jansen, Craig Kimbrell and Clay Holmes. Uh, It's Kimbrell is having a much better season than I thought he was. Kimbrell has a 13, six, three K per nine. Uh, that's the best out of the pack. Kenley Jansen, 201 ERA is the best out of the pack. 227 FIP is the best out of the pack. Yeah, Craig uh, Kimbrell over Kenley Jansen. No. Yes. No. Yeah. Mm. Kenley Jansen has only blown one save. Kimbrell has blown four. Holmes has blown five. Kenley Jansen has not allowed a home run this year. Kimbrell has allowed two. Holmes is allowed too. I mean, Kenley's the best one. No, Craig Kimbrell. If we're, I mean, if, if you want to no. talk about blown saves, how about total saves? Mm-hmm. Uh, no. Uh, what, what, what do you mean? No, you, no, that counts. I don't want to talk about that. You asked me if I want to talk about it. I said no. Well, you don't have well, to, but I will. So that's where Craig Kimbrell right. separates himself. You can and those talk are the about really it, but you statistics. asked me if I wanted that's to, the one and that I said You no. don't have to. I am. You can just quit yeah. talking now and just listen. Yeah. Because you're well, wrong. Well, also, and I'm right, you went and that's total you saves. Craig Kimbrell has appeared well, I just in 38 acknowledge the total games, saves because you started and Kenley talking about Jansen blown has saves. appeared in 30. Well, he's had more chances. Oh, fantastic. He's yeah. got the job done, though. He's, he's saved so more is, games so than is Kenley. Kenley has. Yep. 
Just not as many. Uh, yeah, well, the, he's had fewer chances. How well, about that's, save that's all, rate? That's all about management. Ke- Kenley Jansen has a better save rate. It's all about management. 18 saves, one blown. Compared to 23 saves, four blown. Yeesh. It's fascinating. That's not, that's not a good rate, dude. It's- well, you, you got to also take into account Kim- Kimbrel second in the American League in wins as a reliever. So that's pretty five wins already. Yeah, he's that's a I lot mean, of you wins. Want your, you want your you clo- want your I mean, it, it, it's cool, I guess, if you if you're into your closer being a contact guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's um, just kind of walks crazy. For nine, George walks Kirby for nine, is better. A hundred and eleven and two thirds innings, and we're talking about two chuckleheads with about thirty innings apiece as to who should be mm-hmm. the All Star team. Whose season would you rather have, George Kirby's or both of those relievers combined? The answer is probably George Kirby. It's crazy. Put the put the starters in the All Star game, but you need a high leverage guy for the close out the game. If you're the if you're the skip, all right, you're gonna one, put George Kirby, one. Kirby out yes. there. Yes, uh, George Kirby would be a better relief pitcher than those guys anyway. I'm sure. Whoa! Wow. This guy does. This guy doesn't respect the ninth. No, fuck the ninth. It's different wow. than the ninth. The lights are Shit. brighter, brother. Not it's for me. different Holland? in the ninth. Not for me. Wow. Hey, Kelly's having a great year for a contact closer. It's a great year. My ERA is the exact same. Contact that closer that's, that's given up zero home runs? That doesn't make any sense. Contact closer? Well, I mean, so th- so contact only happens if it's a homer? Uh, He's given up 21 hits. Okay. Clay Holmes has given up 39. Ooh. You want to talk contact closers? Yeah, let's Not, do it. Why don't you go Craig knock Kimbrell? on how, Clay hey, Holmes? Hey, how, many, how, many, how many hits did Craig Kimbrell give up, Jared? How many hits has he given up? It doesn't say. But oh, it doesn't? My Clay Holmes says 20. 39. Oh, no, no. No, it's not 20. It's only 17 hits for yeah, Craig Yeah, 39 Kimbrough. hits for Clay Holmes, though, so, who is so an all-star. Like, That's who you should be attacking, Dallas. It looks like less hits That's for Craig That's who you should be Kimbrough attacking is Clay Holmes, who is the all-star. more innings than Kenley Jansen. And it also I, looks like, hold I, on, I'm going to look at this number, Jared. This might be a typo. Does that say 52 strikeouts for Craig Kimbrell in 34 in the third innings? Because that says 35 strikeouts for th- Kinley in 31 and a third. So, yeah, he's a great contact closer. So, if I'm looking for dominance in the ninth inning, which is, you know, no hits or limiting that and then punching people out and doing the most of that, I think I look at Craig Kimbrell. Oh, Kenley boys up. Never yep. down. Never down. It's Thank- all about the Kenley boys. Can Thank God Ryan positive? Helsley's in the, in the All Star game instead of Christopher Sanchez. Listen, you know, dude, what, yeah. what would we do with, uh, without Ryan Helsley? In the All Star Game, mm-hmm. that's my literally my closer on my team, so I would w- relax. What's wrong with Ryan Helsley being an All Star? I know, I don't know. I He's agree. got half the innings that Christopher Sanchez does, and his ERA is barely better. <laughs> so you know what? This conversation was brought, or this question, uh, what was asked yesterday? What? At what point in time does a relief pitcher mm-hmm. start to garner respect? or attention or consideration for a quote unquote hall of fame candidacy or a hall of fame career. If you are not a closing pitcher, if you are not somebody who is logging, great question, logging saves, then what is it that you have to do to be considered a hall of famer? Is there a certain amount of innings pitched? Right, Because now we start to compare you to a guy who looks like Raleigh Fingers because he wasn't a one-inning save guy. This is a guy who's giving you three, four innings at a time. And he's doing that over the course of three days in a row, four days in a row, five days in a row. Okay, And that's yesteryear. We know that that doesn't happen in today's game. So in a game and in a moment in our game where we're trying to figure out how to categorize these performances all across the board, offensively, as well as uh, pitching-wise, because of the wins, the innings. We we know that this thing looks completely different now statistically and how we are gauging success. But the relief pitcher, since the beginning of time, has been forgotten about, has been left in purgatory and cast off to the side with no real sort of protocol to gauge their performance on outside of saves. I, I hear you. So here, here's my response to that, which is that I don't think there's actually anybody who fits what you're describing 
who has sustained a long enough period of time to even sniff the conversation in the modern game. Because if you look at all of the best relief pitchers over the last half decade, whatever, really whatever you want to do, they are all closers or eventually became closers. So it's like a self-selection process here where like, if we're talking about this hypothetical guy who averages two or two and a third per relief outing and is a dominant force, et cetera, et cetera, that, that hypothetical Hall of Fame conversation is interesting. The problem right now is that that player doesn't exist in Major League Baseball over any sustained period of time uh, that would warrant a conversation like the Hall of Fame. Does that make sense? Let me bring up a name for you. Okay. And it's an interesting name because this individual did serve in multiple roles and it came in the relief role. And this was the individual at the forefront of the shift in compensation for relievers. And he was the one who changed how we identified guys like him who could do what they were running out him to do. Andrew Miller. Mm. Andrew Miller was a guy who, sixth inning, you're on. Seventh inning for two, you're on. Go get him. Not necessarily just the ninth inning. No, no, no. We're talking about so, the high leverage situation that needs to be addressed right the fuck now. Who do we go to? Andrew Miller was that fucking dude. Andrew that was Miller a Tito was that thing too. dude. And For so, sure. and his performance in the 2016 postseason should be maybe my brain. Its own, maybe its own exhibit in the Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Yes. So that's so but, this but, is but, where but, I'm hold going. On, hold on, hold on. I I have a res- like I get it. The problem with Andrew Miller is that when you really boil it down, we're talking about 400 innings, 400 uh, innings, because that, but that's dude, this animal. On. That's, that's not this an animal no. in this exhibit. Jay, if you're not going to acknowledge him and doing that, then where would then his acknowledgement a, come? Th- where would we fine. get he to can applaud be an exhibit. Andrew Miller? He, he, he can be an exhibit without being a plaque. 400 innings doesn't get you a fucking plaque in the hall of fame. Like Andrew what? Miller spent the first well over half decade of his career being Terrible. Trying not trying average. to be a starter. I don't trying care. Trying to be a starter. That's yes. 359 of, of his 829 innings. That's like 40% of his career. Oh, I, I'm talking about just specifically the role of I'm ta- I'm asking the question. You're it, it probably I appreciate needs to be you tr- wanting to argue about his candidacy, which is not what we're doing. We are I am asking you a question about if I, I'm I basically I'm asking you to build the box to put these guys in because one doesn't exist. So quit arguing about whether or not he's going to the Hall of Fame. Nobody's arguing with you about that. What I'm asking you to do is join me in this journey in building a place that these guys can live and be addressed because you're right. He wasn't a great starter and he shit down his leg for the better part of trying to figure that out. But when he found out that he was the dude that you didn't want to fuck with come the sixth, seventh, eighth, or ninth, two days in a row at a time. He started to create a space for himself in the game that nobody else had filled since Raleigh fucking fingers. And because Raleigh fucking fingers did what he did at the rate that he did it, he's in the hall of fame, Jay Hay. But if you're not going to grow up and be that, then do we just forget about you? And it's Andrew Miller in passing. Let's move on to Craig Kimbrell. It's Andrew Miller in passing. Let's move on to Kinley Jansen. Andrew Miller was great in 16. High five. Let's move on. I'm just asking you to help me build a place where these gentlemen can be acknowledged. I mean, I'm, I'm more than willing to do an entire podcast on Andrew Miller's 2016 run or his peak. I, I just don't like... I mean, there have been starting pitchers that have been way better than Andrew Miller who have been cast off in this same way without any sort of like second thought given to their career. Like, I don't I don't but, think it's but like what did they do. They were what they were what starters. And so we have a group and we have a box for where you belong. If you're a shitty starter, guess what, Jay? Hey? I'm in that box, but I'm not talking about <laughs> shitty starters. I'm talking about like, yo, you just Santana, said guys that were starters had, cast off. No, no, no. I said. I, yes, from the national discourse, like you're talking about with Andrew Miller, like I don't, 
like he, he was I feel like he was valued properly at the time that he was at the peak of his powers. He was he made 81 million dollars in his career and all of his highest paid seasons were on the back half of his career from 30 on. So, so like so I feel like we so all like be, knew what we were seeing at the time. So who would be another guy that performed similarly to Andrew Miller? Like over that stretch or just in general? In general, in his role, in his role. Don't give me I a starter who got cast I, off. Don't give me a shitty reliever. Give me him in that role. Who performs similarly to him in that role? And I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not telling you that to do this right now, like put you on the spot. Oh, you can't come up with one. See, you're fucking wrong. No, no, no. Given you time, you would absolutely, I believe we would be able to find guys who would maybe fit into that same role. I just don't know that there's somebody who in that role and in that time did what he did. And so if that's the case, we're starting to see how he separates himself from a closer and how he's separated himself from a shitty starter turned reliever. Because those are all true about him. He was not a closer. He is a shitty starter turned reliever. But once he turned into this guy and then performed this way, what else do we have to compare that to? Who else did that? And what does that look like? That's what I'm getting at. You're like Raleigh fingers. I go back to Raleigh. The guy was a fucking starter to start out. His first complete game in the, or his first start in the big leagues was a fucking shutout. And then I, I, I was talking to him about it. He's like, I can't, you know, I just couldn't deal with it. It was too much. I wanted to, there's a lot going on. I could impact the game differently. Sort of like Eckersley, like I'll get into the, that on the final thoughts, but th that's, that's where I'm going is shitty starters like Johan, we go to bat for, or, or not shitty starters, excuse me, guys that have been cast off as starters. We go to bat for because we're like, those were great guys. Like we don't just, we don't even give them the acknowledgement anymore. Like to your point, I wholeheartedly agree with you, but it's like in the pantheon of relievers and giving them love, really all you're allowed to do is say, man, he was great and I love him. But then it's like, yeah, well, he couldn't start. Yeah. And he couldn't be relied on as a closer. It's like, okay. So then I guess relievers are, they're just warm bodies in the world of baseball. And I'm just trying to find a place where these warm bodies, we, we can take five minutes and appreciate it. Not the fucking all-star game. <laughs> Uh, the MLB season is in full swing and underdog fantasy wants to make it a lot more interesting. Underdog fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. Playing their pick'em game is as simple as selecting higher or lower on their player stats, strikeouts, total bases, home runs, and so much more. Make entries of all baseball or mix and match across your other favorite sports. You can win up to 100 times your money and it's a ton of fun. I will say you have one week to download the underdog fantasy app. If you want to get in on the action, that is the baseball is dead section 10 crossover home run derby that will take place on the very same day as the MLB home run derby, where you can watch Pete Alonzo all-star Pete Alonzo uh, duking it out with guys like Alec Bohm, uh, or you can watch matchups like Jake versus uh, Connor, who plays college baseball, or you can watch, uh, Dallas versus um, uh, Tyler. Who's Tyler Milliken? <laughs> or wow. me versus Steve? Or Jay Hay versus Joey? That that's you want stars. We've got them. Make sure you sign up with the promo code Jared. That's J A R E D to get two hundred fifty dollars in bonus cash and a special pick on Underdog. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code Jared. Um. Okay. Ellie De La Cruz has been learning Japanese so that he can talk to Shohei Otani at the All-Star game. That's fucking cool. I don't know how good his Japanese is going to be. I don't know. Uh, I don't know that uh, he's had enough. Do they do uh, Japanese on Duolingo? They must. They must. I don't know Ooh. how good his Japanese is going to be, but he might have like a baseline conversation. I don't know. Am I am I am I alone here in feeling like 
that's going to be the most difficult language to learn. Like it's Japanese, definitely going to be up there. Like Japanese, Chinese, or Cantonese or whatever. Like Mandarin. I'm just thinking like uh, Arabic. I'm thinking of languages with pictures. Yeah, as trying, opposed good luck to trying to write that shit down. That's what I mean, Joe. That like, makes I'm no sense. Like those are languages with pictures, not with letters, or at least letters that I understand. So mm-hmm. learning that is like learning, you know, hey, you remember this one has a smiley face and a tail with an eye. Like you, <laughs> you fuck that up. You put an eyelash on it with a hair, mm-hmm. not the. It's like, oh well. I'm just oh. gonna say it. I, I'm never learning Japanese. Uh, me neither. Actually, I agree. Yeah, it's. Um, <laughs> me neither. Actually. It's probably a solid bet. I, I, I actually, I'm willing to bet that Ellie De La Cruz isn't going to learn it either. I'm gonna you don't go, think so? <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say that quote was kind of maybe a joke or something. I didn't see the video of it, but I mean, Shohei knows English. I mean, put it this way. John Cena can speak like Mandarin. <laughs> he can like Wait. full on speak Chinese. De La Cruz said... I don't know what I'm going to do, but I want to want to meet him again because when I met him last time, he was nice. He's a great player. I want to be friends with him. <laughs> I want to be friends with him. Yeah, I feel the same way. That's they awesome. Like, That's about yeah. the coolest thing ever. Shohei, nice guy. Can't confirm. Yeah. Would, is there what? anyone on planet Earth, Dallas, that you would learn another language just to speak to him? Is there anyone that you care that much to speak to? I was just going to ask a very similar question. Um, like I've, I've been so torn on like what language, like let's say you could matrix yourself right now, right? Just plug in, boom, you know this language. I mean, I think Spanish would be the coolest. I know enough but Spanish to not need to not to not need that though. Japanese would be the most profitable. If we did baseball as dead in Japanese, we would be like the Beatles in Japan. <laughs> I mean, they they love baseball. We'd be the biggest baseball podcast that's not a Ben Verlander podcast in Japan. And that would be very lucrative, I feel. Yeah, I would um Are we currently dubbing this podcast and in- and shipping it out over there that's what we should be doing we should be repurposing this in japanese jake thanks bud you're yeah, right, you're right jake <laughs> yep you you and you and ella got class later jake <laughs> yeah if we can dub over baseball is dead in japanese and release it in the, to the japanese public we're talking I mean, is this person alive 50 xing our audience is, is who alive is there the person a person that, that I'm can talking translate? To? Yeah. They don't have to be alive. Yeah, we could use AI. Because I think it'd be cool to go back like Sadahara O. Like, yeah. Like, like you're hearing all this shit about this guy across the pond, right? And you're probably like, oh, Babe Ruth, I'm fucking Sadahara O, bud. Mm. I'm hitting 800 pumps. Like, learn about me. You're learning mm. about George? Learn about me. Yeah. I, I, no one I cares wanna, about Babe Ruth, though, in fairness. I'd want to hear what that perspective was like. He's basically been erased from history at this point. No, that's not true. I mean, if you're Sada Horror O, could you imagine like they're, they're just wheeling some dude over here to your house? They're like, hey, can you grab a sword? You guys can chop some shit up together. This guy hits a bunch of homers over in America. What? Joe, what, what language are you learning if you could just download one into your brain? You don't have to put in any effort. You don't have to go to any of the classes. You can just click a button and bam, you know this language. Which one do you pick? Yeah, Spanish would obviously be the most useful, but you could learn other languages. You could maybe want to. I would love to talk to Shohei. I would love to be friends. I've been saying that. They let me talk to him. We become friends, but. I agree. He would be interested, for, you know, because you just want to get to know the guy. I mean, it's so hard to get through, you know, to see the real Shohei. But if you knew it. Japanese, you'd be like, be easier, I guess. Yeah. Seems like everyone wants to learn Japanese just to be friends with Shohei. That's the only Shohei. purpose. Yeah. That, or Ipe. That learning Japanese just, has. Ipe knows English, I guess. <laughs> I want to talk to that motherfucker, though. Yeah. 
It don't matter what what language you're talking to him, and you ain't getting a straight answer. <laughs> nah, nah. Uh, a couple quick things here. We were obviously very heavy on the All Star coverage. Um, Scooble Jay Hay, thirteen punches on Sunday, career high. Uh, I don't know how it lines up, but who who are you gunning for the uh, All Star game starter for the American League? I mean, I think he deserves it. I don't, as you said, it doesn't seem, uh, unless they're going to skip a start for him, it doesn't seem like he would align. He lines up. Yeah, with being able to start the All Star game. I doubt the Tigers are going to uh, prioritize the All Star game over over their own season. Um, but I, I think he has emerged as, as the most deserving of any AL pitcher. Um, and that start yesterday was just uh, absolutely incredible. I mean, Garrett Crochet, I think, is an option that uh, deserves real consideration. Uh, his breakout has sustained fully. Um, I, I do think, not to be a, not to pander, but I do think Tanner Houck, uh, if you're removing uh, Scooble from the equation, I think Houck's got a pretty uh, compelling case as well. I think it, it feels like it has to come from it, one of those three and maybe just one of those two people between Crochet and Houck if Scooble's not going to line up. No love for Mason Miller anymore. He's out. I, I've been colder on that than you guys the entire time. Um, I'm not going to re-engage on the starter reliever conversation. It has cooled but, off. Uh, yeah, I just... I Like, uh, so the newness of Mason Miller, while he's still as nasty as he has been, I, I mean, it has faded some. He's not the same sort of phenomenon that he was when he first crashed in. I mean, that's how that kind of stuff works. Uh, and I just don't think his... I'm not going to be a slave to ERA, but I don't think his ERA is so good that you have to make a relief pitcher the starter. I much prefer the Paul Skeens gimmick, quote unquote, in the NL. Uh, if we're going to go with, you know, let, let's start a guy who maybe isn't the most deserving candidate in his own league um, rather than Mason Miller. But mm. it's not play hating. It's just, you know, if you had a 0 5 0 ERA or something, then maybe that's a different story. But A's yeah. would never let him start the. They don't want him to face top of the lineup. Wow. See, but, Joe, uh, that just, that, that, I mean, when you talk about showcasing talent, Joe, there's no better way to do that. No better well, way to do that and get your guy out there starting the all-star game. Well, right? maybe if they, if they agree, if the uh, nationally agreed to start one, two, three, seven, eight, nine, then yeah, A's would <laughs> I, be down, but then it's going to get vetoed. Can I toss out a few more names for the AL? Please. I mean, I think we would be remiss not to mention the guy who literally leads the AL in both innings pitched and ERA, which is Seth Lugo. Um, I, again, I don't, and Corbin Burns, I think, is probably uh, worth a mention as well. But I, none of these guys have really separated themselves from others uh, in, in a way that makes them the definitive best candidate. I mean, Corbin Burns has the longest track record uh, of the players that we're talking about and is the clearest defined ace. But you know, you also have a guy in Lugo, as we said, who has the most bulk and the lowest ERA in the entire league. Yeah, Scooble, Scooble would be my pick. Scooble would, it would be, be interesting. My pick. This is how, you're not going to get your you're not going to get your like bulldog bona fide established ace starting for the American League this year. It's just not going to happen. But that's fine. Uh, a, a, a new star can be born. Well, this Eric is Fetty. a dude like I, I I just think about. Um, when we were in Detroit and talking to AJ Hinch about Scooble and just about like his, his attitude is his mindset. He's like, there's a, there's a lot of fuck you in this dude, a lot. And like, he is poised and prepared and ready to become a star and was like, this is a dude who he's like, frankly, you know, it's not like I'm ever scared to go out to the mound and take the ball from somebody, but you just, you, you know when it feels different when you're taking a guy out who at times would physically fight you if it meant that he could stay in the game. And like, that's who Scooble is. And so to hear that from, from Hinch, like that kind of made me, made me a little bit more of a fan of him. And then the fact that he fucking shoved. But yeah, he's a dude. His last three starts, 1.80 ERA, 27 punch outs, two walks for Scooble. That's over 20 innings, 10 hits, just one homer allowed. He's done a really good job of that as well, keeping the ball in the ballpark. Um, yeah. 
Got to give your young stud a, a a good look. Baseball's young stud. Yeah. Uh, Red Sox Yankees over the weekend. Jay, hey, uh, no Tristan Casas mic'd up. It was Jaron Duran. Quick little ten k for All Star Jaron Duran, which uh, you could possibly say Jaron Duran doesn't make the All Star team without the efforts and the work of Justin Havens on his most recent video essay, which you can find on our YouTube channel right now. Thank you. Uh, Duran makes the cut. And um, there was some juice. There was some juice to the Red Sox Yankees series this past weekend. I will say this. The previous meeting, which occurred on uh, June 14th, 15th, and 16th, Alex Verdugo homered in the first game of that series. Since that game where he homered a dead center and started barking around the bases, the Yankees have the worst record in Major League Baseball. They are 5-15, and 15, and the Red Sox have the best record in baseball, 14-5. and five. How the tides, how the, how the turn tables, Justin I mean, Hames. It, it feels like a completely different vibe than it did uh, at the beginning of the season. Uh, I mean, for both teams, but also for the rivalry, quote-unquote. I mean, we were talking on this podcast a couple of months ago about how dead that rivalry felt and you know a totally different beast than those of us who got to experience uh the rivalry of 20 or so years ago or even 10 years ago to be honest um and uh having watched and taken in the weekend series um it's just and and done so both on tv and social media it's hard to avoid the reality that like this rivalry can only be so dormant or so down quote unquote because like the level of chatter about it, the level of engagement, um, just it, it, the games. And I know, you know, the Saturday and Sunday games were given their own windows basically, uh, for national broadcasts, but like it really seemed to dominate the conversation in a way that, uh, most head to head rivalries just don't. And it was a reminder that, you know, that that's the power of having a hundred plus years of rivalry behind you is that you can only get so far from it. Uh, and this was a great, it was great to watch. Yeah, I think, uh, who was it? Was it Bobby Abreu that, like, he was the guy that everyone was like, he's underrated, he's underrated, mm-hmm. he became so underrated that he was overrated. Like, the rivalry with the Red Sox and Yankees, we keep talking, rivalry's dead, the rivalry's dead, there's no juice, there's no juice, to now with the point where, unequivocally, that was the most engagement I have gotten all season. Uh, tweeting about these games, it had the most juice of any series against any team, and that's including the previous series. Like they just played a series at Fenway Park, and I think it has a lot to do with the fact that obviously the Red Sox are playing much better baseball now than they were at the time when they they played that first series against New York. They had come off winning two of three against the Phillies, who had the best record in the National League. So I was like, all right, yeah, cool. We just we we just split a four game series with the White Sox. So that wasn't great. You take two out of three against the Phillies, and you're like, oh, okay, all right. And then you take two out of three against the Yankees. Like, we just knocked off the two best teams in baseball at the time. Um, So there's definitely more juice to it now because before it was the Red Sox were a 500 team that just happened to have a good back-to-back series to now they're in a wild card spot. And I think playoff hopes have... 10 x since that first uh, first go around against New York. So yeah, there's definitely more juice to it now because uh, people are actually starting to believe over here. I, yeah, it's just uh, the, the, I would say for a, a sustained series, it was, it had the most juice of any series I've taken in this season. Um, and I would say the only moment where that I felt like you know, the baseball viewing community was coming together in the same way was, or, or more so was Skeens Otani. Like that, that to me was like the flashbulb moment of the season. But this in terms of a series, I think had, um, it, as I said, it was a great reminder for, you know, how dynamic this head to head can be. Um, you know, e- even if we want both teams to be juggernauts simultaneously at the top of the division battling for the AL East, uh, it can be good in other forms as well. Yeah. I mean, that first series also didn't have Garrett Cole because he was a little yep. pussy and he pushed his return to the series after. Uh, but yes, this series had Cole well, Devers. That matchup got paid off. Like kind of how like you were talking about Otani Skeens. 
Like you had Otani hitting the bomb off Skeens. You had Skeens punching out and undressing Otani. This one had Garrett Cole punching out Devers and then Devers hitting the home runoff Cole. Uh, you had a fucking electric comeback on Friday night where the Red Sox had two outs, two strikes, and were down two runs in the ninth inning and end up uh, hitting the home run to tie it, hitting a home run and extras to win it. And then uh, Sunday Night Baseball. It just it feels different when the rubber matches Sunday Night Baseball because then it just becomes like uh, you go from uh, like preliminary matches to like the pay-per-view main event fight. And anytime that you can settle a three game set between two rivals on Sunday night baseball, like what else are baseball fans doing? They're, they're tuning in for that. So you kind of had your national audience to see the finale. And you also had like, you look at the box scores or whatever and you're like, uh, okay, two of the games were good, but like one of them was a blowout. Like what are, what are we really talking about here? Anybody who watched that 14 to four game, like there was, was a more game drama. Yeah. Half that game was packed with more drama than most games see over an entire nine innings like that. There was the Garrett Cole Langs like you, you walk through it with Devers and Cole, but like the Yankees won the game 14 to four and Ben Rice obviously ended up being the story. And that was a, a remarkable thing to watch in its own right. But like there was there, there was an enormous amount of Garrett Cole anxiety at the beginning of the game. So even though a Verdugo team, taking a 32 second trot around the bases sure. after he homered in that being for a sure. dickhead. And, and like it. And, but like that, that. Even the blowout had drama coming from both sides or tension coming from both sides. And like, you know, in some ways, that was uh, the most memorable game for me over the three of them. Um, I know that was the one Red Sox loss. So you probably see it a little differently. But like that, that game was fucking crazy. And like the shit talking that was going on, like from the Red Sox people that I follow or that follow me versus the Yankees was just great. The back and forth was just great. Um, and you just don't get to see it very often. So it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, Dallas is about to see it this week. Um, I'm excited for him. Excited to see Dallas. I hate to say this, especially publicly, but um, uh, my family expressed interest in being able to see you while you're in town. We can figure out a way to do that. Oh, that's that's already been taken care of, bud. <laughs> oh, has it? It's already been communicated. Yes. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Some of us stay close so we don't have to worry about getting close, Jared. Right. What are, what are your plans with them? <clears throat> well, that's really between us, you know? Okay. We're kind of ironing those things out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're not, not too far. I mean, we're not really married to anything just yet, but it uh, mm-hmm. seems like we've got some solid workshopping ahead. Okay. I'm happy yeah. for you. Yeah. Good, uh, good, luck, good, good luck with mm. the videos. Whatever, whatever you got going on. I'm not doing that. I'm not a video editor. I just do the oh. podcast. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to see Dallas Braden at Fenway Park this week, boy, do we have a promo code for you. Mm. It's with the Game Time app. I know a lot of Red Sox fans listen to Baseball is Dead. We appreciate you guys. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace in Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer that it gets the first pitch with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Uh, it's a three game set that begins on Tuesday night. I know we talked about the weather isn't going to be super great. So maybe you want to get there for that series opener if you do want a chance to get to see Dallas Braden and the swinging A's come to town. Uh, last minute deals you can save up to 60 percent off buying last minutes for sports concerts comedy theater and more the flash deals save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event you've got zone deals where you can save even more when you choose a section you let game time choose the seats for you they've got all in pricing toggling this feature shows the total upfront with no surprise fees at checkout uh, get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy the lowest price guarantee your game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Game time ticket coverage. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry today. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use the promo code BID for $20 off your first purchase. Again, terms apply, create an account, uh, use the promo code BID for $20 off. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Uh, Joseph, question for you. Um, I know you're a baseball guy, but are you uh, are you a history buff by any chance? Uh, sometimes, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> would you uh would you go to the JFK museum with me? Yeah, I would love I would love to learn about JFK. I All already right. know a lot, but I heard he died. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. I can, those rumors are true, buddy. Those yeah. rumors are true. I um, like JFK. I think there's a lot of interesting stuff about him. And yeah. I think he's like one of our really most notable presidents who's like yeah. got cut down short. So I think the more you learn about him, the more, more you learn about yourself, really. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I feel that, brother. Um, so yeah, all right. Next week, when we're in Dallas, Texas, me and Joe are going to go to the JFK Museum in Dealey Plaza. And I'm bringing a gun. Yeah, I'm sure they won't care about that. It's Texas. Because someone's got to pay for what happened to that man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Jack, Jack Ruby shot his ass. That's if you believe that he was the one responsible. Lee Harvey I don't Oswald. think that's true, man. But, you know, we'll yeah, figure I, that out at the museum. When we get there, we'll learn. Get there. We'll fact check that. But Okay. If so he's maybe. not the one responsible, you may have real problems getting to the people responsible. They may be yeah. untouchable. Yeah. Yeah. They might be the CIA. Um, I don't think they're know. at the museum. Yeah, no. These people are very protected and probably super old by now. Don't, don't you live in Virginia, Joe? Oh, yes, man. How far away from Langley are you? <laughs> of 20 minutes. They should be there any minute. I don't, I don't know. I, was gonna say, I don't know that you have to leave. <laughs> Joe's mm-hmm. about to experience a live swatting right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got some not even live, Joe. <laughs> I, I tell you, with these CIA guys, man, they can't don't fucking trust them. I'm in a fantasy league with these CIA guys. I mm. swear to God, bro, they try to make trades and they try to manipulate your ass, try to fucking trick you. Trade this. Guy You're in a fantasy him. league with the CIA. I'm in. The, yeah, <laughs> I'm the one non-CIA team in the CIA fantasy. league. Are you allowed now. to tell us this? I don't know. I don't even know these people, but I'm in a league with them. Wow. I don't even know these people. Yeah, Joe, backtracking quickly right now. <laughs> yeah, good, good, good <laughs> luck uh, collecting your winnings. Who? Who? I meant they're, I meant the, 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 they're in the MIA. They're in Miami. Yeah, they're just no, no. CYA. It's at my church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, man. Uh, CYA means something very different in California. So, what CYO. 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 California CYO. Youth Authority. Really. Ah where they take you when you've been a bad little fella got it got it got it got it um but yeah that'll be a fun i think like we're, we're gonna do a lot of video content live from dallas for the all-star game but i think going on a little historical trip with joe would be that'd be a nice little video there might be like vlogs on vlogs from this whole trip instead of just having like one big one like i think like joe goes to dealey plaza is is it <laughs> that's a video could you guys reenact the, uh, would that be in poor taste? No, it's been, it's been plenty of time. I think it's, it's more so reenacting what Joe thinks happened. We need to go to the museum. He needs to hear all the theories, see all the motives for different groups or personalities. Like Lyndon Johnson's not off the hook in all this. You have to look, all right, what's motive here? I like, got my what, uh, that Who guy. stands to gain the, the presidency, most? pal? That's the motive. Yep. Who stands to gain the most if JFK is removed from uh-uh. the maybe, White House? maybe we could get uh-uh. Lyndon on the pod. The mob, it's, the CIA, it's not, it's Lyndon Johnson. It's not about Johnson. who stood to gain the most, Jared. Who was going to lose? The mob was going to lose. I'm writing that down. Uh, Cuba. <laughs> There's a lot of different, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's definitely a whodunit, and there's plenty of guilty faces in the room. Well, so I'm looking at Lyndon Johnson's Wikipedia page, and it appears mm-hmm. he was born in Stonewall, Texas. Okay. I feel like maybe we take a quick little jaunt over to Stonewall and maybe make some accusations. Yeah, let's, uh, let's question his parents. Yeah, like knock what on his he, parents' door and say, What was he like me. growing up? Yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Lyndon Johnson. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> You can keep Lyndon's MVP, but we need to talk to you about something else. <laughs> uh, Lyndon Johnson's parents probably coming up on about 200 years old by now. I thought you were going to say 200 years of being deceased. Oh, well, I mean, we could probably figure this out. Lyndon Johnson yeah. himself was born in 1908. Uh, 
So you got to figure his parents were born in probably at like, least what, 18, years, 1870, 1875, something like that. Somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, oh, parents, Samuel Ely. Oh, there's a Wikipedia page for this man. 1877. He was there born. There it is. Wow. Yep. Lind- Lyndon Johnson's pappy. Oh, yep. Sammy John. Jo- Lindy- Lyndon Johnson's dad born in Buda, Texas in mm. 1877. Died in 1937. Damn, rest uh, in peace. Yeah, what was it? Typhoid? Cholera. Uh, that's a great question. Let's see what he died from. Uh, Snake bite. Uh, of course, he was a politician. Lyndon Johnson, Nepo baby prez. Um, doesn't say Unlike what his JFK. dad died of. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Crossing the river. Hmm. Mm. No, I'm I'm coming up short here, unfortunately. Oh, can I share with you? I I had a I had an aging uh, an aging moment during the broadcast uh, mm. two days ago. <clears throat> Cade Povich um, for the Orioles. Things did not go well for Mister Povich. Um, he was Any assaulted. Relation to Maury? Jared, I'm getting to that. Okay. He was getting he was he was getting assaulted, heavily assaulted. And mm-hmm. uh after a homer, I said, Well, Chris, you do not need <clears throat> you do not need a paternity test to tell you that uh the Oakland A's are the father of Cade Povich. Wow. Very good. And and Chris looked over at me and was like, <laughs> well, that'll make it six. What? And I was like, nothing. Fucking they don't, he no didn't idea. Know who, did no you date clue. him? You dated him? No clue. Wow. No wow. idea. Wow. Come on, Ruck. how old is this person? No clue. He's twenty four. Oh Jesus Christ! Damn. Yeah. So you know my pain with like fucking Tyler not knowing anything. Oh, I mean, my not God. not knowing the era of the Maury Povich show is well. You, you got to understand too, Jay Hay, is. And and Jared, you're learning. Uh, well, I, I, actually, I don't know. Do you are you communicating with the truck? Do you have a production crew that you're communicating with, doing the yeah. um yeah. tests and stuff? Yeah. So so you now know what it's like live television conversations that are flying in your ear, and and so I say that, and because our truck has well, like we have a, I mean, they're incredible at what they do, and I'm sure you're learning too, Jared. Do you see these people behind the scenes who are able to just they make fucking magic happen with shots and yeah. transitions and they just know, man. And when you develop a relationship with them, you know, they communicate with you during the game, even while you're talking because they're going to set you up or they're showing you something or they're going to show you something. And so I said that and it was like the laugh track of a fucking 90s sitcom. You know, you can hear the whole truck open up and everybody's just fucking dying dying laughing except the guy and next I, to you and i looked at my partner and he's like i have no fucking idea who maury povich is bro can't help you <laughs> that's crazy sick that crazy. that's disappointing yeah it was it was easily my line of the year and just nothing <laughs> uh all right final thoughts here today jay hey you got some nugs i do uh, Rafael Devers last night was the first Red Sox third baseman with a two home run game at Yankee Stadium since Bill Miller uh, on the 4th of July, 2003. Mm, uh, I remember Cutter, that. Cro- Cutter Crawford, the seventh Red Sox pitcher in the wild card era to post a start of seven plus scoreless at Yankee Stadium, joining Pedro, Wakefield, Lester, Beckett, Sale, and Rolando Arroyo. Um, wow. Ronaldo Lopez, 171 ERA, uh, is the third lowest by a Braves pitcher through the first 16 starts of a season in the wild card era, behind only Maddox in both 95 and 98 and Glavin in 2002. Talked about Scooble. He was the third pitcher this season with a start of 13 strikeouts or more and zero walks, joining DJ Hers and Tyler Glass now. Uh, and he's the fourth Tigers pitcher ever with such a start, along with Mickey Lolich, uh, Justin Verlander, and Matthew Boyd. Um, the Oakland A's, uh, uh, Dallas was just talking about his, his Povich, uh, joke that didn't land. The A's have now scored 19 plus runs twice this season. The rest of major league baseball has done so zero times. 
uh, looking ahead to tomorrow's today's slate sucks. Um, looking ahead to Tuesday, uh, obviously, uh, before we pod next, Jake Irvin on the bump for the Nats, uh, one seven nine ERA over his last nine starts and a zero nine zero over his last three. Uh, that ERA over his nine starts is the lowest by a Nats pitcher over that amount of starts since Scherzer in 2021. Uh, the Orioles face Imanaga on Tuesday. Uh, obviously, Imanaga, a four seam guy. No team in baseball has more home runs against four seamers from left handed pitchers than the Orioles this season. Something to watch for. And Blake Snell is scheduled to make his first start since June 2nd on Tuesday at home against the Blue Jays. Coming in with a 9.51 ERA and six starts this season. The highest ERA by Giants pitcher through the first seven starts of a season is Al Worthington in 1957 oh, at 10.25. His nickname that season, Al Not So Worthington. Um, oh, oh shit. dog spot. <laughs> uh, Watch and out, my- Carrie. Jay Hayes coming for your job. <laughs> and then. Uh, uh, two final thoughts. I did track down uh, the death cause of Mr. Samuel Ely Johnson Jr. That was a heart attack in 35, and then another heart yeah. attack finished him off in 37. Uh, he's buried Jeez. at the family cemetery at Johnson City. If we want to go visit that, maybe that could be a cool video. And then I'll the other thing I, was, I learned or was reminded of, you know what that B in Lyndon B. Johnson stands for? Uh, Bradley. Nope. Baseball. Nope, that would be awesome if it was baseball. It's baseball. it's basically it, it's basically that cool. It's Baines. Oh, <laughs> should have known. Love that. That's should've it. Should have known. That's it for me. Uh, Joseph, what you got cooking on the YouTube channel? Uh, uh next video. Yes, uh, we got a new vi- video about coming up about all types of weird, crazy stuff. Um. You know I don't give away the video ideas, but if you guys nah. want to guess, I could give you a hint. Okay. It's going to feature a lot of players. And I believe if you look into someone like Gary Sheffield would be in, is going to be in the video. And that's your only hint. But um, that's the only hint you're getting. <laughs> so it's, gonna, it's a weird video. Players are involved and you may see some Gary Sheffield. Yeah. You just never know. Uh, baseball doesn't exist is the youtube channel you can check out joseph's work there he's like a he's like a mad genius it's you just he's he's a tortured genius is what he is um (laughs) the next time you see him we will be in dallas texas together dallas Um, braden texas dallas uh yeah so we're gonna be there friday to wednesday the home run derby is monday TBD announcement about the where we're doing a watch party. Was that on the air or off the air that we talked about doing one at like a Burger off. King? That was, that was off, off the air. air. Yeah. yeah. So we we like want to do a watch party somewhere for the All Star game because Major League Baseball won't credential uh, one of the biggest baseball podcasts and two dudes who literally broadcast Major League Baseball games and one of them does work for MLB Network can't get press passes for the All Star game. Uh, with those credentials um so we want to do a watch party for the all-star game somewhere and uh if we can't do it at like the place to be because it's kind of last minute we were thinking about doing one at like an arby's and Let's just do it at the grassy up. knoll yeah we could i mean honestly that's not the worst idea um we'll figure it out we'll, we're gonna keep you guys posted on where the uh watch party is gonna be but it's going down um and we're yelling timber uh dallas final thoughts um yeah i do the um as as i told you guys i think i talked about it last week and i'll probably talk about it every time i get to do it because it's it was just one of those moments for me yesterday at the ballpark where you're like damn man like this is this is a a life that you did not see coming um, I, I've had the opportunity and Jay, you, you understand how this goes. You meet people and you talk to people, you befriend people who you otherwise would have no business knowing being around being even in, in their universe. Um, one individual like that for me is the great hall of famer, Jim Palmer, who 
I told you the Orioles were just in town. He was in Oakland in 1968 for the first game at the Oakland Coliseum. Uh, a dear family friend of mine, uh, the Sprague family, Ed Sprague Sr., pitched in that game. Ed Sprague Jr. was at that game. Um, and I got to sit down yesterday and talk to two individuals who not only laid the foundation and set the tone for what it was like or what it meant to be a Oakland athletic, but when you zoom out and start to think about their impact on baseball specifically and in Oakland, I said it yesterday on the air and I'll say it right here. Oakland, California has brought a lot to the game of baseball and specifically two things that are really important and something we talked a lot about today, Jay Hay, and that's one, the wave and two, the save. Because when you talk about Raleigh fingers, and Dennis Eckersley, you're talking about two of the top 15 greatest closers the game has ever seen. And their utilization and their deployment started in Oakland. So when you go back to how baseball games were managed and how bullpens were ran, the evolution or one of the first phases of evolution occurred in Oakland and it occurred with Raleigh Fingers doing what he did. And then you fast forward to Dennis Eckersley getting plucked out of a starting rotation because Tony La Russa and Dunk say, buddy, I think you're going to help us out. And I think you may help yourself out a little more if we can get you in these series, two out of three of these games, maybe even all three. What do you think about that? We're going to call you the closer. You're only going to pitch one inning though. Are you into that? How's that sound? Well, for Dennis Eckersley, 390 fucking saves later and a hall of fame candidacy later. Um, there you have it. Fair decision. So yesterday I was able to spend a day with Jim Palmer, a day with Raleigh Fingers, and a day with Dennis Eckersley hanging out, talking nothing but baseball and what the city of Oakland has meant to each and every one of those individuals on different levels. So uh, just to be in a position to do that and share with the fans or be the conduit between fans at home who are watching and listening to those stories being told and the fans who showed up to the ballpark just to try to catch a glimpse, say goodbye, say hello one last time. I, I just, uh, I was able to, and it doesn't happen a lot, just kind of take five minutes and realize where the fuck I'm at on this, on this planet and um, forever grateful. So it was, it was just a great day. You're always the perspective guy, Dallas. That's, uh, that's nice. Well, nice he's, the oldest. he's the oldest. That he's the oldest. That is true. He's the oldest the and the wisest. Yeah. He's the wisest. You can kiss yeah. my entire ass. <clears throat> yeah, he's uh, by far the oldest looking. Um, there's no doubt about that. Um, Most tired. Yeah. He's always exhausted. This guy. Just the reflection off my forehead. It's That's why my hairline looks like this. The baldest, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, the baldest. Yeah, there's zero. There's nothing going on up there. We gone. Um, Fuck all you. Jake Sakes. Jake Sakes. <laughs> Uh, while we were finishing up the pod here, I booked a demo with an AI voice dubbing service. Um, the description reads, the AI analyzes the original speech and replicates the vocal tones and inflections in the new language. It also studies the lip movements and synchronizes them to the new dubbed audio track. So, sounds pretty promising. We'll see. Maybe we're going Wednesday to Japan, we're boys! Episodes in <laughs> Japanese. Wow. All right, let's fucking go. We need to get on this. We need to start... Leaning into that Japanese market and uh Imagine if Jake just fucking came up with the next frontier in podcasting, yeah. like just right here at the end and oh, AI that. dub AI dubstep. We're doing it. We're nice. doing it. We could just get a transcript, Google Translate, and then have Jake read out read it out. He could be the dub. Hey, I got a pretty sick kimono. Um I don't want to get I don't I don't want to be guilty of appropriation or anything like that, but like if this guilty. is a thing, can we wear like kimonos? For an episode? No. Guilty. Uh, yeah, why not? I just like my Komodo. I'm going to wear my cardigans. I got a Japanese Babe Ruth shirt. I could wear that. Silk robes and kimonos. Check it out. Lonely Island, boys. Can't wait. Um, all right. We'll see you guys on Wednesday. Wow!